Hey, this is Jim Graham from the Masculine Journey podcast, where we explore relationship instead of religion every week. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Welcome to Truth Talk Live. All right, let's talk. The truth is, I can't hide it, I can't hold it anymore. A daily program powered by the Truth Network. This is kind of a great thing, and I'll tell you why. Where pop culture, current events, and theology all come together. Speak your mind. And now, here's today's Truth Talk Live host. Today on Truth Talk Live, how fun, I get to be back. <laughs> I haven't done this for a little while, but I am back today, and it is Missions Monday. And you may know Missions Monday could be, we could be traveling to Sydney, Australia, or we could be going into China, or or we could just be going to Moxville, North Carolina. <laughs> there you go. As was the case at Carolina Bible Camp over the weekend. Uh, Dangerous Heart Ministries hosted what they call a boot camp, and I was honored to be part of that team. I've got a couple of the other gentlemen with me here today, but before we do that, again, this is, you know, from my standpoint, this is your show. You're listening, and I want to hear from you, right? It's, it's Your calls always make my day, and so 866-348-7884. You may have a dad joke. You're thinking, I haven't heard that Robbie on, been on there for a week or so. I hadn't got to tell him my joke. I want to hear it. You know I do. 866, and I've got some for you today, too. Be ready. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. But here's a question I really want you to ponder. And, and when I first say it, it may be a little bit confusing to you, so I'll try to clarify it as best as I can. But have you ever taken part in someone hearing from God for the first time? In other words... When we do these boot camps, we've done them for years with Mask on Journey. We've done them even more years with Dangerous Heart. And part of it is what we call a covenant of silence, where we send guys out <laughs> on a mission to hear from God. Mm-hmm. And, and again, Robbie speaking can have whatever effect, probably little. Of course, if Jesus is speaking through me, that's, then we've accomplished something. But, oh, my goodness, when somebody hears something that clearly – is in line with the Bible, clearly in line with, with, with what they're out there talking to him about, and then all of a sudden, whether it leaps off the page from Scripture or it leaps right into their mind from their past, it's, it, it, it is mind-blowing, the fruit of that. And we got some stories along those lines, but most of all, I want to hear your story. You got one, 866. Maybe you heard from God. That would be cool, too. Or maybe you were there when somebody heard from God the first time, and they're like, uh, Robbie? Was that really God? 866 348 7884. My old friend Darren Kuhn with me and my new friend Jesse Robinson. Uh, and you guys go to the same church, right? We do. Yep, we, we do. do. Jesse just showed up one day and we let him hang around. And, and now he's uh, kind of helping lead our men's ministry. And he just finished his first boot camp. So he's a rookie. New into this. Um, it's they won't let me leave, won't let me leave the church now. They've got me wrapped up in there. <laughs> so we do that. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity because I have not talked to Jesse about this personally. So I'm excited to hear it. So that we do something even more radical than a covenant of silence, in my opinion. It's almost always like stepping off on the on the leap of faith that you may have seen in that um, Indiana Jones movie, right? Where he the bridge of faith, where he had to step off where he couldn't see anything. It looked like he was going to go down in the cavern. Well, we do something called listening prayer where we're in a group of guys and, and we ask God. And so you got to do that. I, had you ever done that before, Jesse? I have never done that before. A- and did that feel a little awkward? It was very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it was very awkward. I, you know, I don't know that it ever gets totally comfortable. And I, and I would venture to say that if it did, you might be doing something wrong. Yeah, 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 because it's like, God, I need you to come through here. Like, man, if you're facilitating it, you're like, man, and plus you're trying to hear from God, and you got all that. So 
We did it different than I've ever seen it done this time. Mm -hmm. Darren challenged us. So we, we have an amazing talk that literally has had a huge impact on my life called the New Name Talk, where we ask guys to go out and hear or ask God, you know, God, what do you call me, right? And, and as a result, you know, you, you, there's some, I could tell you story after story of guy's life that was totally impacted by hearing from God on that particular issue. Well, this time we did that with listening prayer and we got in these groups, right? And, and so you were in one of those groups, right, Jesse? And can you kind of give us your story of what that felt like in the middle of all that? Yeah, I can go ahead and give my story on that. Um, actually, and that, that was really difficult for me for a lot of reasons. Um, I actually started with your speech. You, you gave your, uh, your presentation right before we went into those listening groups. And it really, it really hit home with me when we started talking about what, what he calls you and how you said that the domino effect in your life when God gave you your name, uh, Faithful. And you said, well, what kind of name is that? <laughs> so like a, <laughs> an old dog. <laughs> but it, I kind of had the same thing happen for me when, uh, when I did hear God in that moment give me my name. And it was difficult for me because it's not something I'm comfortable with. Um, he, the only thing that kept coming to mind was leader. And that's what kept coming to my mind. And, you know, throughout my life, I've been put in positions where I was being asked to lead. And I just, a lot of times, refused to do it. I didn't want to do it. I've had teachers through my growing um, that have called me and told me that I was going to be a leader throughout my history in the military. I was often called to lead in the military and do things throughout that. And even coming, so even coming back to faith, because I actually left faith when I was in the military for a lot of a lot of issues that I had just going through the military, my experience there, and then being rebaptized into Christianity. And then a month later, being asked to lead men's Bible study, and I'm just getting back into it, and I'm, I don't feel prepared to lead men's Bible study at all. And so it just there's a domino effect that just connects right. everything of why I was being asked. But even when we were going through, I was for that. I mean, 30 minutes of the listening prayer, I was really struggling with that name, and I, I really didn't say a whole lot because I was just wrestling with that thought in my mind, just talking to God during that experience. And then Darren comes up and he starts talking. He's like, he really pointed out that I had a misunderstanding of the, the idea of meek. And, and that, that's what the word came to his mind of what God gave him, should my name should be. And then we had. Wow, that means there's a break. You get a chance to think. <laughs> <laughs> but you listening, you get a chance to think, what's your story? Like, when did you? And, and usually it catches you by surprise. And wow, I never would have thought of that. 866-348-7884. 866-34-TRUTH. And again, if you got a dad joke for me, you know, I'm always open. 866-34-TRUTH. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Truth Talk Live and have fun today. We're talking about, have you ever been taking part in someone hearing from God for the first time? You got to see the light in their eyes and like, oh man, that's so exciting. And we're here with Dangerous Heart Ministries, Darren Kuhn and Jesse Robinson. But more, you know, I just, I, I love it when people call in. So we got Jonathan is in Columbus, Ohio. I'm guessing that's Ohio. Jonathan, you're on Truth Talk Live. Good evening. Good evening, man. I appreciate this. I appreciate the ministry. It's awesome. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. Um, here's the thing, man. I, uh, I have a relative, and I think he got caught up in some sort of doctrine or something that's kind of scary. And the thing is, um, he really does not accept anything that has the name of Jesus, uh, but he accepts everything that has the name of Yeshua. It has to be Yeshua. I really don't know how to address it. I mean, I, 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 I really appreciate his conviction. I think that's awesome that he is for, you know, the, the Jesus Christ, the one who died for our sins. But how would you address that? Is there scripture? Is there anything? How would you correct that? Kind of? Number one, I love your heart, Jonathan, that you're, you know, you, you, you clearly love well and you're treating his heart right and 
you know, the whole thing with languages, and again, people that know me well <laughs> know that I, I, loved, I love Hebrew, and, and undoubtedly when I hear Yeshua, you know, it lights up some bells for me personally. Oh, me too. Um, however, you know, clearly what, I'm, what, what comes to my mind, although, you know, this is, this is a great opportunity for a lot of prayer right on its own, but what immediately comes to mind is Jesus himself did not just speak one language. And, and obviously, in the book of Acts, when Peter addressed the crowd, he, he, he addressed everybody in a language that they, under, that they could understand. Now, how all that worked, you know, that's, that's something for all our imaginations to work on. But undoubtedly, in order to share something that, that people relate to in English, you know, as much as I want to speak Hebrew to them, you know, it just doesn't work because they can't, you know, the idea is not just what I feel. The idea is what everybody is feeling that's around me. And so I want to be able to speak in a tongue that, that the person that's listening can understand me. And, and, and here's another example, Jonathan, as I think about it, that for years, I mean, literally years, maybe 22, I taught the special needs ministry at Calvary um, Baptist. And a lot of those folks were nonverbal. Wow. So for me to stand there and say anything in, in a verbal language was meaningless. But maybe you know the sign for Jesus. <laughs> Most people do. You just, you just take your finger and put it in the palm of your hand, right? And you put it in the palm of the other hand. And, and I had the phenomenal honor one time, Jonathan, uh, of leading one, a nonverbal autistic gentleman that, that you had to see him prior to coming to Christ and after coming to Christ to see the effect that Jesus had on his life when he received him. But had I not been able to speak it to him in his language, he would still be without that relationship with Christ that he had because I never saw uh, the man's name was Marius and his hand was always in his face. I mean, his hands were always over his face because he was ashamed and he would never even look at you better yet shake your hand. But after he came to Christ, his hands were down always. He came in with his hand out trying to shake my hand, and it wouldn't be unusual at all that he would just hug me and about kill me because he was strong. As, but the idea was he became a brother in Christ because, you know, we got to speak to people in a language that, that they understand. Does that help at all? Yeah, that does help. It gives me a lot to think about. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, Jonathan, I'm honored that you would, you would come with me. I, what's his name so we can pray for him? Yeah, his name's Shuji, and he has a heart after God, but it's like everybody that says the name of Jesus, they're wrong. It's like you, you don't really have the name above all names, that's Yeshua. You know? And man, Yeshua, like you said, that lights me up too. And I told him, I love that. I love, I love Yeshua, but I, I believe it's the same guy. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, wow. All right. So it's VG. Eugene. 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 Yeah, yeah. Now, let's pray right now. So, Lord, thank you for Eugene, and I thank you for his love for your name, your beautiful name. And I just pray that, that you would open his heart to some new ideas and, and help him to see not only it cool to worship Jesus in our heart, but that other people might have that opportunity where he able to communicate that. And however that works, Lord, we, we, we leave it to you. And I thank you for a chance to pray for Eugene this morning. In Jesus' name and Yeshua, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jonathan. God bless. Wow. God bless you. What an amazing, amazing story. Yeah. And so we have my old friend Busman. Is an <laughs> Good morning. Or I always say morning because I do too many morning shows. Busman, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, where are you, Robbie? Because it's, uh, well, I'm in Ohio, brother. It's 425 p.m. Wake up, Robbie. Time to go to work. <laughs> always yeah. good talking to you, brother. Same here. I've got a bad joke. Oh, Are right. you ready? I am. I am so I've ready. You have no idea. I've got a dad joke. Okay, here we go, Truth Talk Live. How do you make dad's stew turn into gold? How do you make dad's stew? Oh, Stu would love this joke. I hope he's listening. <laughs> yeah, he's on his yeah. way back from Greenville right now. How there do you, you make go. dad's stew turn into gold? Busman, you've stumped the panel. <laughs> okay, so now just to clarify, stew meaning that real good soup, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm, I'm, stew. I'm not okay. going to assume anything. I know exactly what you're talking about. 
<laughs> I love a good stew. Anyway, so are you ready to talk live? We are ready. You add 10 carrots. Oh, 10 of them. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Pure gold. Not 14 it's carrots. It's a K, Robbie. It's the K on carrots. That's the dad joke zinger. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know the the yeah, thing about carrots carrot. is you know when snowmen go to, you know pick their nose, it's it's one of those things. But anyway, um, if you <laughs> did, you <laughs> uh, have you got? Did oh. you have a comment on the topic? I did. You know, okay. it's funny. I was I was the person, Robbie. I was the person when my when my firstborn when we were blessed with our firstborn. My wife and I were at the ultrasound, at the 20-week ultrasound, which means we could find out what gender we were having. Oh, yeah. And we, we found out that we were having a little boy. And I was ecstatic, you know, uh, for being a dad. My firstborn was going to be was going to be a son. So up to that point, we had talked family names, family names from her side, family names from my side. And we thought, we'll just keep it family. Well, we weren't sure yet, and we were praying about it. Well, when we got home, guys, from the ultrasound, a dear uh, sister in Christ, who is my uh, wife's best friend, called my wife and said, um, my eight-year-old just came up and said, I know what to name. Oh, hang on. Hang, hang on, Busman. we got to go to a break, and hang you have on. us all sitting on the edge of our seats. Nobody going to Walmart because we're coming back <laughs> with this end of Busman's story. Here. I'm excited to hear your son's name when we come back. But what's your story? We would love to hear it. 866-348-7884. True Talk Live today. It's Missions Monday, and we're fresh off the Dangerous Heart Boot Camp with the question, have you ever taken part in someone hearing from God for the first time, or maybe you heard from God for the first time? we got Darren Kuhn and Jesse Robinson here with us, but we also have with us Buskman, and when we left our hero, he was getting a call from an eight-year-old <laughs> about the name of his and son. He, here's the wild thing, guys, is... Our dear friend, the mom of the eight-year-old, didn't know what we were having. They just knew that we were going to the ultrasound. So I got to clarify that for all the listeners. Right. So when when my when my wife got off the phone, she had this just this dazed look on her face, like I can't believe this. And I said, "Well, well, what what was said, honey?" And she said, um, "Susan's boy son, Christopher." just come to her so susan called me and said christopher said i know what to name their child their boy their boy and it just caught us what you you knew we was having a boy christopher evidently so and out of the mouth of babes the the, the out of the mouth of babes uh, god speaks says the psalm in psalm 8. so we on standing on needles we were like well susan what what did he say he said luke andrew wow there are there are no luke andrews in either of our lineages robbie so we were like this is an act of god my 17 year old son is named luke andrew <laughs> what an amazing that is so cool. I mean, and, 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 you know, I have not not a similar story, really, but just a miraculous story about my youngest daughter's name. And, and so the name can't hardly come out of my mouth that I don't taste that. Right? I'm sure you, right, you, right. you feel that when Luke Andrew comes out of your mouth, you taste how God it, came through in that moment for you guys. With, with I'll never ever forget that, Robbie. I'll never. I remember exactly where we were. I remember my 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 wife's face, the look of it when she got off the phone, and we were just fresh out of the OBGYN office, and it was just it was just miraculous. Well, as always, my friend, you're a blessing. And since I've got you on the phone, and I have a few of what I know you love, 
We're going to test your dad joke ability since you tested the Truth Talk Live ability. Are you with me, Busman? So, uh, Bring it on, Robbie. I'm ready. Grayson, have you got my music for me? Grayson? Grayson? All right, we gotta get we gotta get our joke music going, Busman, because I just don't roll without my music, you know. There it is. All right. So why do we say amen at the end of a prayer and not a women? Jesse, you got any idea? I have no idea. What do you think, Busman? Why do we say amen? Why do we say amen at the amen instead of a women at the end of our prayers? I hate to say this, and I thought I was a contender, Brother <laughs> Gilmore. I do not know. I do not know. Oh, it's because we sing hymns, not hers. Yes, we got are, three sport. big shows <laughs> on Truth Talk Live and a matinee on Sunday after church, folks. <laughs> so anyway... Where's more where that came from? And I bet you know this one, Darren. I'm, I'm guessing you do. How does a pirate start his prayers? Our father. Our father. Our father. Yeah, you got to say it just right, Darren. You got to put the our father. Yeah, gotcha. there you go. All right, how about this one, Busman? I have high hopes for you here. Where do Russian Muslims go to pray? You know what, Jesse? You got that look like you might know. It's got something to do, it, it would have to have something to do with mosque, guys. It, it's, so it, what's it, Russian it, and mosque? Am I close there, Robbie? Yeah, you're close. It's mosque owl. <laughs> mosque owl. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a dad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, He's you got such a, a, a Moscow, yes. And to round up my whole complete thing for today, when you hear ramen, it's not just noodles. Okay, what else might that be? Ramen. It's not just noodles. What else could that be, Jesse? No idea, still. I bet Gra Grayson, you got this one. Not ramen. Just noodles. No, it's not just noodles. What else might that be? Ah, it, it could be I'm, the. I'm, and I'm using all of my dadness here on this, Brother <laughs> Gilmore. I'm using all of my dad's superpowers, and I'm coming up with nothing. <laughs> well, if you're not of the right generation, you might know this, but for those of us who lived in the 70s and 80s, it's a little easier because it's actually Scooby Doo fish finishing a prayer. Ramen. <laughs> Ramen Raggy. Okay. Ramen Raggy. I do have a dad joke for you. Oh, wait a minute. Jesse's got one. All right. All right. And you are a dad, so it's official. Have you heard about the restaurant on the moon? <clears throat> I heard about it, but I'm going to let you. I hear it's got great food, but no atmosphere. That's true. <laughs> great food, but no atmosphere. Whatsoever. Yep. Well, I've eaten in many of those moon restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> I won an ash bar just the other day. Anyway, uh, Busman, thank you as always. It's such a joy to have you on. God bless. You have a great day, great you week. You guys too. And the rest of your morning. Absolutely, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, time to get up and get work. Hey, God bless your talk live. We love you here in Ohio. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. All right, so when we were finished up our conversation oh by the way you might have a dad joke you might have something you want to talk to me about and i would love for you to call and you're thinking robbie can you say that number again well here you go 866-348-7884 again when we were talking earlier with jesse uh you were finishing up your listening prayer story yes so so as soon as soon as darren finished talking to me and said that the name that he heard from god was meek um steve actually jumped in and said he was going to talk to me after the prayer group about it um steve has been my mentor for for a few months now and he's been really helping me get everything together and helping me with the men's bible study and getting together and he does talk a lot about how well i'm doing with the group and how he sees a natural born leader and then we had a few other guys in there I, chris and thomas were in there as well and these two guys I do not know. I've never met them before this prayer group. And Thomas jumped in and said the word that he heard was warrior in the sense that I was ready for a fight if it were to come. And it, 
hearing the word leader from God in, in my heart during that before even sharing it with these guys and then having them all three affirm the same thing I was hearing really made it so I feel like I have to embrace what he's calling me to now. It's something that I've really been struggling with and kind of fighting back off just because I feel inadequate to do the job and, and to lead, especially, again, with the men's Bible study. I've only been ba- back in the faith for about three months now. So it was it was, it was was a really big, big deal to hear from God in that sense and just uh, affirm all of that. You've heard the term strike when the iron's hot. <laughs> Steve has never allowed an iron to get cold. Um, <laughs> and so he jumped all over Jesse and, and that it's such a cool thing. And one of our, one of my responses to Jesse saying that, cause he kind of shared that with us that night. And I said, Jesse, that's exactly why you are a leader because you are humble enough to submit to a mentor. You're humble enough to say I don't know the answer to this but I'm going to go digging and find out and that and he has I mean I've known him for a few months now Well, that, you know also I think it would be helpful for the audience because everybody's got a little different take on meekness mm-hmm. but I know your take on meekness and I know the audience would love to hear your take on meekness because it's it's extremely important to the picture right well it is I mean uh, Jesse had just kind of given us a short description that he kind of sort of went to church a little bit when he was younger, but his church focused more on the meek side of Jesus than, you know, anything else. And then he went to war, was in the military and saw things that, you know, don't fit that. And so I immediately said, I just heard him say that. And I didn't say anything for a few minutes and I was praying and praying and praying. And I heard God say, meek. And I said, Jesse's going to love this. Um, <laughs> and I, you know, I mean, I hesitated a little bit, but but the reason was is because I was hoping that other guys would come in with something that would affirm that. And I, I just questioned him, and I said, what does meekness mean to you? And I, I said, you know, it's kind of a dirty word, isn't it? And he, something along that line, and he, you know, affirmed that, but... Basically, I, I explained that meekness is um, calm strength, that it is a guy holding up, buttressing others, and that that guy's really a leader because he's pushing others up. Right, right, right. Strength under control, something along those lines. Yes, yeah, power under that. control. What is your story? We would love to hear at 866 Three four eight seven eight eight four. We just got one segment left, and I need to hear it. Eight six six three four truth. Give us a call. Welcome back to Truth Talk Live. Today is Mission Monday, and how fun! Oh man, I've had so much fun here with my friend Darren Coon, Jesse Robinson, of course. Busman and Jonathan. Jonathan's call. I'll be thinking about that one for days. I mean, just just awesome stuff that we always get from our listeners. So I'm glad you're calling. We got Gerald is calling, but I want to remind you that the number for you to call in because the show just isn't the same without you. Eight six six three four eight seven eight eight four. Gerald is in Durham, North Carolina. Gerald, you're on Truth Talk Live. Good evening. <laughs> Brother Robbie, Robbie, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? The first person I led to the Lord was out of spite. Really? I worked for a partnership, and one of the partner's sons had just got out of college. They gave him a hamburger stand, a movie rental store. They gave him a convenience store, and one day he appears to go on my route. I had a video game route. Hmm. So I'm playing on a local Christian station, and he says, look, I'm tired of this music. Can you put on something else? (laughs) So instead of putting that on, I put on Michael W. Smith and some uh, contemporary music tapes, and he didn't realize it, but he was getting fed, and between his sister and I, we led him to the Lord. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
and he's one of my best friends now, and he didn't take my route. They just wanted to know where all the machines were. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you're like, man, this is, this is a huge threat that's in the, in the truck with me. And so yeah. it, it turned out that way. And so how many years ago was that, Gerald? This was back in the 80s. Now, I was saved in 1983. In 85, I, did, I started the van bus ministry. 87, I started Royal Rangers, the boys ministry. Continued that up until the virus came in. Still doing the bus ministry. When, in the mid-90s, I was a missionary to Belize for three years. Oh, my goodness. And 2020, I was in New Orleans doing Mardi Gras on the corner of St. Anne and Bourbon Street. And God used me in such a way that on the way back, he, God said, did you enjoy me using you? And I, and I was saying, God, that's what I've been praying for all this time. He said, give yourself to me. And I had held back my singleness because I didn't trust God to provide the right woman. <laughs> so holding back 10%, that singleness, God still used me. But now I'm on fire for God. I'm 72 years old and just open for whatever God has for me next. <laughs> that is so awesome, Gerald. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad you called. What a, what a great story. And uh, you keep up the great work out there, my friend, okay? Well, you you provide a lot of shows on Truth Radio that I listen to all of them. Oh, I'm, <laughs> oh, thank you, Gerald. God bless. I really appreciate that. I do. Because it is really the audience that makes makes Truth Network work. So I know. Uh, I get a lot of good stories from your programs. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, people call in. It's amazing. It's amazing. And so thank you. God bless you. Have it a great is. week, my friend. So we need your story still, 866. You know you're wanting to call. Come on, you just don't know how many people may be blessed. Or they might, God might touch them with your story. So don't hold back. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. So I got my story. I've been holding back. So I got to tell you, at this camp, we do these listening yeah. prayers. And so you sit down there as a facilitator, and you say, okay, guys, we're going to sit here for 30 minutes and, or an hour, this was supposed to be, and, and see if – we can hear something. If you can't hear your your new name from God yourself, ask for it for the guy across from you. You know, we said Darren was and purposely uh, made the group so nobody knew anybody in the group. So there was all these people I'd never know, but really much talked to in my life. I had met Charles, who was to the right of me. So as we sit down, and this was actually an older group. I guess they did this because I'm a geezer. Well, and yeah, I mean. <laughs> You were the second <laughs> oldest there, I think. So, anyway, as I'm sitting down, you know, with my fellow geezers, um, the gentleman to the right of me s and the says, you know, you know, I, I I've I've hardly ever heard from God. Not sure I ever did. So this might take a while. <laughs> and I said, okay. And then the guy right on the other side of me says, yeah, I don't. You know, this isn't. You know, I, they're explaining their awkwardness because it just wasn't something. I said, it's okay. We're going to pray. If you hear something good, if you don't hear something, you know, don't pose. Just just go with it. When you got something, you use it. So, man, we hadn't sat there two minutes, right? We had not, you know, and all of a sudden, Charles just immediately says, I don't know how it happened, but all of a sudden, God has just taken me back to when I was eight years old. I haven't thought of this story in years and years and years and years because I think Charles was actually older than me. I think he was. He's 80. Mm -hmm. And so you could see that he's literally crying with this story when he was eight years old. And this was the story mm -hmm. that what he heard was that um, he was not very, or he grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, although he did not know that. Mm -hmm. a and so he'd come into you know, whatever, second grade late, and they had cloak rooms back then. I had one. I know exactly yeah, what you're I did talking too. about. And, and so he was the last person out of the cloak room, and after he sat down, the little girl somewhere in the class yells out, somebody has stolen my candy bar, I guess. She goes back to the cloak room, and somebody's stolen her candy bar. And uh, some little rich kid, the way that Charles put it, was sitting in the, the back, says, oh, it must be Charles. He was the last one out of the cloak room, and he's poor. That's the first time Charles ever knew that. Yeah. 
you know, what a little, you know, <laughs> thing to hear. Yeah. You know, obviously, you know, our battles against, you know, spiritual forces that hurt, you know, that obviously got this little guy's attention. But then, of course, the teacher takes him out in the hall and just, you know, starts, you know, confronting him like crazy. Open your pockets, pour him out. I know you've got that candy bar, accusing him, going crazy on poor Charles. And you just, you know, you can imagine he must have wanted to just die as he's been falsely accused. And then they go back in the classroom. She humiliates him some more, looks through the trash can to see if he threw it in there on the way out and just all this stuff, right? Yeah. And, and so when they go out to the... to the um, So the accusation was Charles is a thief. Right. And so when they go out to the playground, not one, not two, but three of his friends come up in individual different conversations and says, I know... Say they say to Charles, I know you didn't take the candy bar, Charles, because you are trustworthy. <laughs> and so he heard trustworthy, trustworthy. That night, his dad takes him aside and says, Charles, I know you didn't take the candy bar because you're trustworthy. <laughs> and I said, Charles, do you think <laughs> your name could be trustworthy? <laughs> And by this time, you know, the guy is just, and he's going on and on, like, I have not thought of that story, you know, and, and the whole camp, for so many reasons, and those those who are familiar with our camps know that it, we, we've been talking about that you've got wounds in your childhood that set up things that are taking a piece of your heart into your adult life that you don't even know are there, but Jesus wants to get those things, and he wants to clear the temple. I mean, he literally knows that, you know, the temple is your, your your heart right and and, and you got to get that stuff out there and talk about it in order for it to work that being said a lot of guys tend to think that all we focus on is the wounds right the brokenness and you have to you have to start there because if you don't have a clue about your own brokenness then you're not going to feel the need for healing and you're you're not going to take that to jesus and so we spend you know a, a little bit of time going through that and, you know, we often get the question or the accusation, you know, that this is all about woundedness and brokenness. It's not about healing. But that talk right before that session was the first part of, okay, here comes the healing. This is how God often heals people is by going straight at their identity. And affirming, no, I know I made you trustworthy, Charles. And when I send angels to help you, I say, hey, go help trustworthy over there. He he doesn't use your mama's name, usually. Right, and, and the other point that, you know, is the 119th Psalm, uh, King David said, I'm made wise by my enemies. Mm -hmm. And it's often the case that, that the, the attacks come straight at a guy's glory. Right. And so how would you attract... How would you attack trustworthy? You'd call him a thief, and mm -hmm. you get somebody to accuse him of this, that, and the other. So, you know, he starts to lose his own identity. It was obvious yeah. for those of us sitting, right? But if you're the guy that your trustworthiness has been attacked your whole life, mm -hmm. in it, you, you can't hear it. Right. A and so it's just beautiful to me, and not just for me, obviously. Right. But everybody sitting in that circle, and then, you know, guy after guy after guy, and there were tears, literally, I mean, for my, I think everybody's sitting in the circle mm -hmm. as God just came after. And I think you had that too in your circle, right? I did. Yeah. I don't, I don't think any one of us, um, other than maybe me. And it's just because I was all cried out already, but, um, <laughs> uh, God came. So do I need to call the way? Yeah, <laughs> you need to call the ambulance. That's exactly right. God came for me in a huge way during this boot camp, And, and I'm, I'm excited about unpacking that over the next few weeks, but but yeah, I mean, it was it was a moving time for everyone there, from the young to the old, and uh, I I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that guys were affirmed in what their real identity is, and once you've heard God say that to you, other people can say all kinds of things about you or what you are, and now you have ammunition to fight off that lie. Right, because when you hear from God and you know it was from Him, and it's been affirmed like it was for you, Jesse, it you know it makes makes all the difference. Um, 
Man, so much fun to be on with you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you for all my callers today. And, and guess what? I think we got Nikita coming back tomorrow. This is the Truth Network. The Russian.